so D is asking this question. Um, so the ego cannot know the self and the self does not know the ego. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, once, uh, uh, I think it's recorded, if I remember correctly, in letters from Sri Ramanasham. Some f a foreign visitor um, came to Ramanasham and while he was uh, just, he was just a, sh uh, a short stay, maybe just one day visit or a few days or whatever. While he was visiting, um, the temple elephant visited the ashram. So he took a picture of Bhagavan and the temple elephant. And when he went back to his country, he wrote a letter to, to Bhagavan, uh, enclosing uh, a print of the picture he had taken. And he, he in, his, uh, in, in below that picture, on the back of that picture, he said, uh, a big body but doesn't know the self, and a big self but doesn't know the body. <laughs> So, the elephant is a big body but doesn't know itself. Bhagavan is a big self but doesn't know the body. So, when Bhagavan saw that, he read it out and said, Bele, Bele, very good, very good. Mm -hmm. So, some people come for a very short stay, but they understand what Bhagavan is all about. And some, yes. some hang around for a long time and they still don't get it. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Like <laughs> Bhagavan said in Guru Bhachakurai, like the shadow of the foot of a lamp, though they hang around there for a long time, they don't get it. So, Michael, this is yes. Namaskaram. So, I'm the Namaskar. one that doesn't get it, that doesn't get it category. So. Well, we're all in that category. Don't worry. You're in good, you're in bad company <laughs> with all of the rest of us. <laughs> No, so, so where does that leave me? Like, I cannot know myself and the self does not know me. So who where said, am I? Not? Who said you cannot know yourself? I, the ego, is saying that. Ego cannot know itself, but you can know yourself. So the one talking to you right now, who is the one talking to you? That is, you can't ask me. You have to find out for yourself. <laughs> I can't tell you who you are. If you, if... The one who is now talking, let's say, just for the sake of argument, this one who is now talking is ego. If ego looks within to see who am I, ego will find, but it is, it is not ego, it is that pure awareness. That pure awareness always knows itself. So ego as ego cannot know itself. Ego as it actually is always knows itself. But that is very not two eyes. An ego eye and another eye. It's the right. same eye in its pure condition. That is what is called Brahman or Atma Sarupa or pure awareness or uh, Bhagavan or God or whatever. When it's mixed and conflated with adjuncts, it's called ego. So the real, we, that is, though the ego as such does not exist, ego is not wholly non existent because there's an element of existence, of real existence in ego. That element of real existence is I am. That is the only real existence. And that I am is quality less, like it has no quality. Yes, yes, it's Niguna, Niguna Brahman. So that's what I, I mean, I think I wanted to have some quality. <laughs> because... <laughs> that is the problem with all of us. We're still clinging, clinging on to those uh, qualities. We're not ready to let go. That is the whole problem. Yes, because when I try to look within and I'm trying, it just leaves me the most I can do, I guess, is intellectual. So the most I get to is, it's just nothing. That's not the most you can do. You can always turn within. What you mean by intellectual is conceptual. But the, what is the real nature of the intellect? The nature of the intellect is to see clearly. The intellect means that ability to distinguish, to, to, to discern dif uh, differences. So the, the ego is, the intellect is the power of discernment. That mm. power of discernment, so long as we look outwards, it is clouded and confused. If we turn that power of discernment inwards to see who am I, it will thereby merge back into its source. Mm. 